Okay. So, if you're doing a, if you're doing a lot of intense spiritual work, then um, if you're doing a lot of intense spiritual work, then uh, and you're making good progress, I mean, expect to be tested. I remember, like uh, you know, uh, my spiritual one of my spiritual teachers, Dr. Hawkins, sort of saying he had given up chocolate to God. He was not going to have any more chocolate. And it was, and he went to. Um, Aww. Oh, Hello there. Oh, oh that's so sweet. Oh, that is so sweet of you. Oh, bless you. So um, he was giving up a chocolate, and the very next, and he went to a, um, a course of Mir- I think course of miracles retreat, and it was like everyone brought chocolate. There was chocolate cake. <laughs> There was chocolate everywhere, and it was like he had now given up. He'd made a declaration to the universe and uh, to God, and that tends to happen if you make like an ironclad conviction that you're not going to lie anymore ever again, yeah. or I'm never going to eat another chocolate. I'm surrendering this to God completely. But usually, what happens is at some point, the, the universe will, some in some mystical way, will. Uh, have chocolate be offered to you, you know, or if you are, you know, if you, if you um, like, um, I remember, like, uh, you know, I, I went to a 12-step group for gay giving up food addiction, and I mean, this sounds, this sounds quite obvious, but, you know, as soon as I declared that I was not going to have sugar, you know, then I, you know, then suddenly, like, these people would come out with trays of, like, little things in the street offering me things. <laughs> And stuff like you know, and it was, and that, and that for me wasn't an accident. It was like a, it was like it's actually well known in certain twelve-step groups that you will be as soon as you say I'm never going to drink again, or as soon as you say uh, I'm never going to have chocolate again. You know, it's just well known in these groups that as me, you make that firm declaration to God, and I think you should be tested. You know, there is a strengthening process in just making declar- and saying no a few times. You know, like you're offered, and just people just coming up and just say, please have this drink, or plead, or, you know, free samples just stuck in your face. Mm -hmm. You know, some guy was just saying to me, like he was offered a sack full of his bars, you know, as soon as he made the declaration. So that thing is, I think that's really good. For me, it's like, if you're like a making, going to make big spiritual progress, you're usually tested quite strongly. So I think it's really like a compliment. Like if you say I'm going to give up chocolate, and then everyone's offering you chocolate cake the next day, and making, I think that means that you have the potential to go very far, because it's a really big thing. So the universe is going to test you big, if that makes sense. Whereas if you're just giving up something which is very small, then you're not you're going to be tested in like in a very small way. But if you're going to give up something which the ego gets a lot of juice out of, a lot of dualistic separated. You know, in addiction, we call it a big hit. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to say, like, alcohol's a big hit, or chocolates are a big hit, or dating is a big hit, whatever it is, you know, then if you're going to give up something that's got a lot of juice in the ego and you declare to the universe, usually you'll be tested very strongly. You know, where if it's a mild hit, you might just hardly get tested at all. So if you get, like, amazing offers of chocolate bars and stuff, that probably means that you're really, you know, it's a good thing, I think, if you can say no to the temptation. That means you're going to make huge progress. You know, and often, um, as, as, as you know, like, um, uh, so when you get to higher levels of consciousness, the, the, the actual tests get enormously bigger. So, um, so like, at the, like Hawkins was sort of saying, at the last gateways towards enlightenment, you know, when you're getting to, the, to the, some of the higher vibrations you know, of enlightenment, you get the biggest tests from the universe. And this is actually true if you test it through muscle testing with Christ. So with Christ, it was like there was, there was an offer of power of the whole world. Now that you're this spiritually advanced, claim your power over the whole world. Own your power. I mean, those are like so once you get to the, you know, all, you know, to being one with God, 
you know, you're no longer tested with chocolate bars, you see. <laughs> that was like day one, you know, like you're giving up chocolate bars. You're not going to get the heavy guns after you. But when you're going to like just about become one with God, then it's like, well, why don't you, you know, some, an energy will offer you like dominion over the whole world to claim power. Do you, want, do you want to say yes to that or do you want to say no to that? So it becomes that. Also, it's the great thing, you know, as they say, so you have so many celebrities going into drug addiction and suicide. You have um, spiritual teachers that fall. In 12-step groups, it's common for people to fall for the seven deadly sins, for, for food, for sex, for power, for money, for prestige. So as, as you get... And what's the reason for this is that as you... Um, it's like there is energies that don't want you from inside the ego and from outside that want that do not want something that represents truth to go very high in this world because it clears it clears the collective you see when you're like a nobody if you're a nobody and you're and you steal t 10p from your mum it's like you're not going to get the big guns after you yeah but if you're going out and being a shining light, you know, and saying things which are freeing people from the bondage of separation, then from within your own ego, you know, you're going to have success, you're going to have fame, you're going to have a lot of people that are, li that are liking you. And, uh, but then you'll also be having things that will want to take you down. That's just normal, you see. Even if you became like, if you became wealthy through integrity, you know, through being honest and doing an honest day's work, and then you become like known as the one who, who delivers integrity and you become famous and rich for that, eventually you're going to get loads of people offering you to do something dishonest to get a quick buck. You know, now that you've got this amazing reputation, now that you've got this amazing reputation and everyone believes that you're the real deal, like endorse my product endorse my product and i'll give you seven million pounds just to sign on the dotted line right now and and that's a that's a choice you see so that's why people fall you see it's like the energies from within your own ego and from the collective egos will will tempt you to sell out your your what you stand for, which is integrity, truth, a teacher of truth, or a performer of truth, you know, uh, and uh, and and you and you, you can drop drop your level of consciousness through through that. But I think it's really really good. Then you know, if you're you know, I think one of the best things with that is to have a spiritual mentor. It's really really good to have a spiritual mentor. I mean, in twelve step groups, you you get a, some a guy called a person called a sponsor. That's, or you, you want to have like a spiritual mentor because if you just go up and consciously you don't have someone you can talk to or someone who can at least sort of say hey you know like say no to that you know seven million pound deal to flog the the broken the broken dolls or whatever or or sell sell the endorse the cookies with lead poisoning in them you know, but you're going to get seven million pounds up front. You know, you, you, your mentor is going to say, "I think this is a good deal. I'll get seven million pounds today." And your mentor is, "Should I do it?" And your mentor will probably say, "It's probably not a good idea." You see, that you get there. But if you're on your own, sometimes when the ego is on its own and doesn't have some kind of feedback, then um, then uh, you know you, you can you can suddenly, you, you can get temporary insanity. You know, you just suddenly get like. You think you're amazing, someone offers you a deal, it's probably dishonest, but you say yes and it's too late, you see. You sign the contract. So <clears throat> so that was on testing. Expect, you know, I've had that, you know, I, I often have like things happen to me when I go into bliss states. This was one of the one, <clears throat> this was one of the one of the things I remember once I was in sublime bliss and I'd just been got off the the the, the bus had just dropped me off near my home. And I couldn't really move. I was just standing next to the side of the road in bliss because I was just in an ecstatically blissful, overwhelmingly blissed out state. And this, you know, so this, this car came quite close to me and this guy spat on my face as he went past. 
you know, and it's like that type of stuff happened. I also had another one. I had probably some, I need to do the anti-karma prayer. I was once in, uh, no, this is true. I mean, this is a bit, a bit, bit of a weird one, but it's true. I was once um, in Hammersmith, and I was just in a, another bliss state. I just sat down on these chairs in the tube station in Hammersmith. There are these, these chairs out there. I stood, stood there, and it was at the back of an escalator, and I was just blissed out. And this guy went up and spat on my head. <laughs> as, as, and I was just like, and I'm, I'm in these really like blissed out, can't move states. So people, that's the second time. So obviously there's, um, if you watch my videos on anti-karma, you probably see probably, was probably quite naughty around stealing people's hats in, in religious temples and spitting on people in bliss states. <laughs> so that, 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 that's happened more than once when I'm blissed out, so people will spit on me. So, so you're, you're tested, you see, you've got to, you've got to like let it, let it go. Um, the other thing, I mean, I'll just quickly mention it because it's just something that I really was inspired by, is like, um, is to, t you know, and it goes with Dr. Hughes, like, take ownership for everything that happens to you in life. 100%, like Hugh Lenz says, 100% of responsibility, it's not an accident. You know, everything that happens in your life. And one of the things is, um, I sort of see that, um, and this is very common, but you know, like if, if someone does something which I don't like, then it's, it's just, I need to own that that's an aspect of myself which I haven't forgiven in myself. Mm -hmm which is now being reflected to me. Mm -hmm. And it's just an opportunity to, for me to forgive myself mm -hmm. for not having forgiven myself for having done that to others, mm -hmm. you see. So you, it helps to reframe it very, very quickly um, mm -hmm. in that way when people are suddenly rude to you for no reason or, or, or whatever, you see. So it means, oh, I haven't forgiven the one in me who has been rude to others. That's why it triggers me. Cause if I'd forgiven myself for doing that to others, then it wouldn't affect me. The fact that it's triggered me, you know, someone's been rude to me, means that I've, I'm, I haven't let it go in myself. That's why I project it out and get disturbed by it when people do it to me, if that makes sense, yeah. Okay.